I uh, click the, as clicking things on and off, uh, I was going into uh, the sanctuary real quick to uh, uh, grab something and I have found out very quickly that when you leave the bright sunshine and go into a dark sanctuary, wow, <laughs> it is hard to uh, see. And, uh, but I'll tell you what, um, I love it out here actually. It is just so nice. It is so nice having the cool breeze that comes by. Um, I talked during, uh, during the uh, welcome, or excuse me, during prayer about praise. And uh, yesterday morning, I came up to the parking lot here to uh, begin to pull some things up out from the, the bottom of the church. Um, so it'll be easy to bring out canopies and bring out chairs and uh, hand sanitizers and face masks and uh, began to prepare for uh, umbrellas and I was thinking through what would be what would really look nice in an outdoor service how could we adapt for the worship leader Pastor Mark did very well I think maybe next week I will incorporate maybe a little bit more of, of sound for you guys um, I, I, I boom but others don't. But they did very well. I'm at the back and I could hear everything, but I might enhance the sound for you guys uh, next week. But I'm looking at all the things for praise. And as I was thinking, things, I'm like, oh, let's bring the Bible out. And uh, um, the uh, thing for the pa uh, Pastor Mark to use for worship. And as I came and pulled in, um, there's, there's things, I noticed things right away very visual and I noticed that the gate was wide open and that's, that's not a problem um, everyone honors our parking lot lately so um, the gate was wide open and I go wow what's that and I pulled in and uh, one of the things actually are you ready I'm pulling and going, oh man I wish because I have an electric blower and the parking lot was just it was a mess um, a, a week or two ago, um, Elijah, who's almost seven, um, had mentioned a comment on, I go, I'm going to go cut the weeds down. Weeds had, when we were um, with the things with the virus lockdown and stuff, weeds had started to grow. <coughs> Excuse me. Weeds had started to grow, and they got pretty tall in the back lot because we were using the front lot. And so I came up one week, and Elijah goes, well, wait a minute, we can play hide and seek behind those. That's how high the weeds had started to grow in the back lot. And so I'd come up and I, I had cleaned the weeds one day and it was, it was like this, very hot, very sunny. Um, and so as I was pulling up, I was like, oh man, I wish I had brought the blower to make the job easier to clean the lot. And when I got out of the, uh, the car and looked at why the gate was open, I was astonished because the lot was completely cleaned. No, no slurry rocks that were all over the place. No extra weeds that were all over the place. And I just looked around and I'm like looking like, I mean, because on Wednesday, um, we noticed that you, you miss a couple of things. There was some, uh, some after brush from trees or grass or something that was kind of hanging around the building. All of that was gone. And I'm like, wow. And so, uh, I'm going to tell you, I, I had praise in my heart. In fact, to tell the truth, I, I, I kneeled down right over there, and I thanked God. God, thank you for making this so nice for me. I don't know who did it, but whatever you do, God, on my request, bless them immensely. <laughs> because, I mean, you, you don't understand that the, 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 probably the trouble that they went through to pick up, you know what, it, it looks like nothing when there's a little bit of rock, but when you start sweeping it into a pile, that's a lot of rock. And so I was like, man, God, just bless whoever did that. And uh, I have an inkling, okay, of who did it. And, 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 uh, Pat, all right, was one of them. And, and Alan, oh, we're talking about, cause I, Thank you. You know what I want you to grasp? There are people within our church family that love so much that would come out in a beating sun and pick up rocks and 
pick up debris so that when you came in this morning, you didn't have to worry about some debris blowing in your, because we have that beautiful ocean breeze coming at us constantly. And, uh, and so, man, God bless Pat. God bless Alan. You know, and so now I have a name, all right? It is awesome. So, you know what you do? You give praise for what God does in your life as a church family. That, and, and, and I can connect it. Are you ready for the big connector? Because I wanted the house of God outdoors to be as nice as possible as a parking lot. And look what happened. So you give praise to God that his house was cleaned up for us to gather this morning. We're going to talk, if you have, please have your Bibles, um, to Hebrews chapter 3. We have been going through the book of Hebrews, and so I'm going to um, very quickly um, rattle through um, Hebrews chapter 3. And I don't mean that in any disrespect. What I mean is in, um, I want to uh, make sure we kind of walk right through this. So, Hebrews chapter 3, starting at verse 1, says this. So, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. I want to stop right there. Of all the things that you gather as you began to look at Hebrews chapter 3, is think about it. Consider the Savior. You remember we, we talked uh, earlier on about how Jesus is, uh, is, is supremacy over everything. From the very beginning of time was the Savior, was God, was the Holy Spirit. And so here we have Jesus that we learned um, early on of his supremacy. And so here at the very beginning, this letter writes in such a way. Um, you know, last week we had uh, where everything is in comparison. And as we're walking through things in Hebrews, in chapter 3, it's like this. The story continues. And I don't want you to kind of get lost. So think about this for a while. Consider the saviors. And most of all, I will say this, especially as pastor, connect. We need to connect as a body of believers. So dear brothers and sisters who belong to God, the first connection, and belong to those called to heaven, the other connection, make sure that we connect. And that goes on with this. For he was faithful, for he was faithful to God who appointed him just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses. Just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. Let me stop there for a sec. We need to be very careful. Remember I talked about how the comparing goes? We need to be very careful. Okay? As Moses is being spoken about here, it, it brings into a connection for the he, for those that were, that were taking this letter on. You know what? You remember Moses, don't you? You remember the story of Moses, don't you? And how Moses was this individual and he, he was placed over God's house as a servant. You remember him, but you better be careful as we consider this, the Savior not to idolize God. Moses. And even today, we still have individuals that idolize others. Well, you know this person here, or this pedestal here. In fact, what we do is we take our idols and we place them so high, and when they fall, we go, did you see my idol fall? And we begin to idolize what's going on. And, and, and it's an easy thought process because let's stay with the house of God, okay? This is God's house. Moses was over God's house. 
This is God's house. And we have, are you ready? When I talk about idolizing, we have, as the scripture said, you look at the builder, not the building. You remember the builder. And we, don't, we all do it. You know what? And you can start to rattle off buildings. Isn't, isn't, isn't the Getty building by the Gettys or in connection to it? Or, you know what, oh, and I wish I could remember, in the past coming from the, the Midwest, you would remember when it was called the Sears Tower, who designed the Sears Tower? Or you look downtown and you begin to look at the buildings there, who designed the, that? There's a, a funky looking building right now that's brand new, who designed You begin to look at those and the builders uh, that, that created them, and guess what? Even in our own church, we do the same thing. Not that we're idolizing, but we're remembering. How do I say that? If we were in the actual sanctuary, and we were about to leave the sanctuary, if you actually looked up as you were walking, you would see the painting that the architect designed for this corner with trees and a different kind of wall and a, and a, and a, and a little grass. You would see that in the picture that the architect designed for this church, for God's house. We don't idolize it, but we remember what took place back in what, 1959 is when it was being thought through. 1960 is when it came to be. 61, I believe. You understand what I'm saying? By a picture. Let's continue on to uh, verse four. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. The one who built everything is God. You know what I love about that? Is right now. Because we are outside under the beauty. I mean, you have a canopy or an umbrella. But I'm going to tell you what. We are under the canopy of God. The one who created the heavens. You know, maybe, it might just be me, loving the stars, loving the way the planets are. When I see the moon out sometimes, there's one big bright thing all by itself before any star comes up. You know, if I looked on the uh, astronomy, not astro astrology, astronomy, if I looked on the astronomy charts, I could tell you at this time of year, that's Venus, that's Mars, that's Mercury. It's just so cool, the canopy of God, his house. And so for you this morning, today, outside, you are in his house. Because he built everything. Let's keep going. Verse 5. Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of the truth God would reveal later. But Christ... But Christ, as the Son, is in charge of God's entire house, and we are God's house if we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. This is huge. If you're here this morning, I want you to know this. Be confident. We're living in a time frame that's all just messed up. People are freaking out. And with some reason, good. And with some reason, not good. Be confident. I'm going to tell you this. Um, one of the first things I asked this morning as we prayed about a man who had passed away who had cancer, the first thing I asked my friend Miles, because Miles is, a, is a, 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 a good, godly man in the sense of, of sharing the gospel with friends. And so I know he does it. So my first question, did he know the Lord? Did he know the Savior? where there is no comparison? Yes, he did. And I told him, I said, this is, that's a time of celebration. Yes, there's a time of hurt for those that are, have lost. But then at the same time, there is this uh, beauty of, of a man who is with Jesus. Have confidence in the builder who is over everything as I always talk about, have confidence in God. You know what? I might get sick, but that doesn't stop my confidence in God. 
I might stay healthy. That doesn't stop my confidence in God. I might have a building over my head or no building over my head. I might have finances or no finances. No matter what, have confidence in God. Verse 7. That is why, this is why, excuse me, that is why the Holy Spirit says, Today, when you hear his voice, but don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled, when they test, tested me in the wilderness. There, are, there your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. So I was angry with them. Then, and I said, their hearts always turn from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. Once again, we have this not only think about God, not only think about the Savior, not only think about and having confidence in the Builder, know this, that He is over everything. And even as Moses was over God's house, the house was messed up. Always turning away from God. I mean, if you go, that's why I said at the beginning, if you go you know, in Moses' story, man, it seemed like from the get-go, oh no, why this? They're going to take us back. Why, are, why do we follow Moses? We, so, and one verse it says, they, we even had it better where we were. And they didn't. Yet this is what they say. They had lost their confidence in the builder. They had lost their confidence in the one who has the house. And here's the beauty of it. Moses stayed. See, we got to grasp an understanding. Not that we're idolizing Moses, but we have this understanding that Moses stayed with God's house. Stayed the servant of God's house. And so then we come up with the warnings. That even though the story goes where how they uh, tested God, how they, how they were... Um, always questioning the things. And the beauty in the scriptures of Hebrews is even while they saw the miracles, they acted this way. And so when we were in verse 12, it was like this, to be careful. Your, your heart, not Moses' heart, not the Israelites' hearts that were there when Moses led them out of Egypt, that time has passed. And a lot of times we make this mistake of living in the past. And that's probably why we lose our confidence. Because as living in the past, oh, I remember what I did, how bad I was, or I did this, or I did that. And we, we have more confidence in what we was doing back then rather than the one who has come and changed our lives. And so, in God's house, be careful. Look at your heart. Have that heart that is confident. Let's continue on. I was at verse 12 there. Now I'm going to go down to uh, verse 13. You must warn each other every day while it is still today so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today. You ready? Connect, connect, connect. As the writer here is talking about God's house, connect, connect, connect. When I say connect, you do exactly what the, the house has been given instructions to do. Tell your friends about the Savior. Tell your friends about the miracles. See, some of y'all don't think probably this was a miracle in the parking lot because we have a name. You know what? When I came up here and didn't have a name, it was a miracle. Because, oh, and thank you. I, I was actually, you know what, 
because as, as he's walked in with us and, and, and is worshiping with us, yesterday, I'm going to tell you what I was thinking. How can I make a big old banner? Because I didn't know who it was. How can I make a big old banner that just says, thank you, thank you, thank you. How can I connect for someone who took care of God's house? Connect, connect, connect. Now, tell, tell, tell. It is today. And in my scripture, in, in, in my version, the word today is in quotes. I take it this way. It'll always be today. It'll always be today. It'll, you know what? When, yes, you know what yesterday was for, for you when you were in it? Today. You know what tomorrow's going to be when you get in it? Today. So you tell, tell, tell. The scripture says to warn. Why warn? Because you can easily, the story of the Israelites, you can easily slip back into sin. You can easily start distancing yourself from God. We talked about that last week. You can easily do it. That's why you connect with God's house. So that just maybe in the, in the trippings, you can still have someone who says, hey, let me tell you about this. You might want to look this, look, look, look about this. It's okay. It's okay to have instructions. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's get on the right page so we can't keep going. There we go. The wind, the wind blows and then you got to figure out where you're at. <laughs> That's all right. Verse 14. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. I'm going to go on. I'm going to start over at 14 again. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we, were, we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. I'm going to stop there for a sec, just, and then I'm going to go, and then we're going to finish out. When I read that about this belief, when I first believed, you know what it took me back to? Not very far. It took me back to last Sunday. Last Sunday, I don't, see, I didn't know where it was placed. But then I looked it up. The song that I'm about to talk, it was the very first song we sang last Sunday. Anybody, remember, anybody know what it is? I'm, I'm testing you. It's okay. What's that? It starts with an A. I'll give you that hint. And then it has the word, it's an amazing song. Amazing Grace. <laughs> and so you, with the scriptures right here, talking about how, what did it say in verse 14? For if we are faithful to the end, Trusting God as firmly as when we first believed. The songs, the verses in Amazing Grace. Uh, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to what? Sing His praise as when we first begun. Have that heart. Man, I talked about confidence. Have that heart. Have that Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, you know what that is? The gospel told out. How He found me when I was blind. How he rescued me and brought me to life. And while, where I will be until the day I have my last breath of praise. Let's keep going. Verse, uh, verse, 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 verse. 15. Remember what it says? Today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did. When they rebelled, and who was it who rebelled against God? Even though they heard his voice? Wasn't it the people Moses led out of Egypt? And who made God angry for 40 years? Wasn't it the people who sinned with corpses lying in the wilderness? And to whom was God speaking when he took an oath that they would never enter his rest? Wasn't it the people who disobeyed him? So we see that because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter rest. And I'm like, ready? You guys, I'm closing. I'm closing. We're about to go into our last, our, our closing song. And you guys are like, uh, maybe, maybe you're not. But I'm like, that is the worst ending of a sermon. Corpses lying in the, all around dead. As they were there for 40 years, those, those Israelites, that's how we're going to end the message, Pastor? Yes. You know why? Because the whole thing of Hebrews, Hebrews 3 was the warning was the telling 
tell the story and tell it right. Don't flower it up. Don't make it like it was the most wonderful. It was actually the most wonderful thing. There were so many miracles that took place with the Israelites, but they still rebelled. Look at your heart this morning. Don't rebel against God. Be the one who's confident in Him. And now I'm going to tell you this. Are you ready? Because if we were to turn the page, which guess what? Because we're kind of going in order. The page will be turned. Next Sunday, we are going to do chapter 4. And so I want you to know this. Even though we talk about those that had unbelief and that you should have belief, I want you to be inspired as we get ready to sing. As Pastor Mark is, is coming uh, uh, up here to lead in this song. In chapter 4, and I'm just going to jump down to verse 6, it says this. There is God's promise. So God's rest is there for people to enter. Verse 6. God's rest. Remember I, verse chapter 3. Oh, they did not enter into the rest because they disobeyed. They did not enter the rest because they rebelled. But I want you to notice, God did not stop loving them. And so as we go into verse chapter 4 next week, we know right away, don't be, dis, don't be disheartened. God's promise never fails. God's promise never leaves. God's promise is there for people. And you know what about that word? That's me. That's you. To enter his rest. So as Pastor Mark comes, we're going to pray and we're going to sing. Um, he could pick and choose how many verses we sing or whatever. As we close this morning, I want you to look at who you are. Be confident in God. If you don't have that confidence in God who is over everything, who is everything, who's created everything, simply ask God, I'm unsure of things. I desire the confidence of your Holy Spirit at work within my life. God, please help me. If there's things in your life that are causing you to uh, um, slip away, have that sin. God, please forgive me. I know what's right and what's wrong. And my heart leads to the wrong all the time sometimes. Help me to change that. I don't want to be like the Israelites. I want to, I want to follow you. I want that pillar of fire in front of, uh, in front of me and behind me. I, I want all of that. So God, please help me. Now I'm going to tell you this. And the last part of the prayer is this. Those of us that are confident in the story, help me to make sure I tell it. Tell it to others so that they can come confidently to know you. So that they can be a part of God's house. Because he built us. Pastor Mark, come on. Are you able to? to? Yeah, all right. And so we're going to sing. But um, let, let us pray before we sing. Holy God, as we uh, hear your words, help us to be that people, confident, to tell others. God, if we are stumbling, give, help your, uh, allow your Holy Spirit to truly work in our lives. Help us to see things in the way that is of you. Help us to be that, that piece of the house. And every piece is important. Help us to be that piece of the house that glorifies you, not rebel against you. God, help us to know that the house gets built bigger and bigger and bigger with every person that you um, have called. Thank you for, as we go into next week, a promise of rest. In Jesus' holy name, amen.